I just finished the tutorial from yesterday's video and I thought maybe we should prolong it and I'm gonna show you part two of creating that animation so we're just gonna pick up where we left off yesterday. But before we begin I've been posting daily on this channel for over 35 days so I'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. So with that being said we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. All right so that's where we left off. We got this and I've been thinking maybe we should turn off the effects just for the smooth playback. Actually it's not looking bad without the effects. Damn. All right, so now I'm gonna turn off motion blur and we're gonna duplicate cam control three. Delete the last keyframe, parent three to four. And I would like to create a movement going backwards. So we're just gonna do it like that. I'm gonna select both and we're gonna add mid graph. That's way too slow. I'm gonna open up the other set of keyframes for reference, move it forward and let's see now. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna actually support myself with that layer, the black transition we've created before. So I'm gonna hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V. I'm gonna put it on top. Then I'm gonna select everything underneath it, apart from our cam controls, and we're gonna pre-compose it. Now this is a trick that will save you a ton of time. I'm just gonna rename it to maybe one. Let's hit enter. And if you hit that asterisk, then everything you've created so far is gonna still be there and you got it all in one layer. So it just keeps the timeline clean. Very, very helpful. I just have to adjust that layer. So now what I'm thinking is hitting you for that layer. I'm gonna grab the keyframes, move them to the very beginning. And when we're moving back with that movement, I'm gonna actually use track mod. So I'm gonna click here. And in that layer where we collected all the other layers, I'm gonna change the track mod to black transition. I'm gonna probably turn on the effect on this just so we can see how it works. All right, so that's what we have. It's kind of the opposite way we wanted it to be. So for this, I'm gonna go back to mode and I'm gonna hit invert. And that way is the way I wanted it to be. So we're just gonna adjust the timing. And underneath that layer, I'm gonna create a new solid and we're gonna put it below number one. I'm gonna hit Control shift y for that layer and I'm gonna change the color. I feel like kind of dark bluish color could be a good idea. Yeah, let's hit okay. And now somewhere here, I'm gonna create another text that is gonna be saying advanced. I'm gonna go back to our switches and I'm gonna turn on the 3D layer, recenter it and let's see. Kind of needs to be adjusted. So I'm gonna open up the second view and where is it? I'm gonna toggle transparency grid. Okay, so that's the camera movement. I would like to have that text a bit further away and I'm gonna scale it up. We could probably fade it in as well. Maybe we could also add one of the text animations. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go back to one view. And now what I'm gonna do is duplicate that layer, put it below. We're gonna rename it to advanced stroke. We're gonna change the color of the stroke to blue. Let's bump up the scale. And we're also gonna add turbulent displays to this. Now I'm gonna play around with the values. I would probably need to bump up the complexity. That's too much, maybe like three. And we're gonna alt click the evolution. I'm gonna type in time, asterisk, 200 maybe. And that's what we should have. Just because of that expression that the form text in the background is moving. But I feel like I'm gonna adjust some values or I'm gonna try a different displacement. Twist smoother is looking pretty cool here. And we also need to adjust that background, that dark blue. So I'm gonna trim it to the position of our transition and that way it won't affect our first scene. Something I did in the original version that worked really nice is leading up that background text. So for this I'm gonna add deep glow, you could use regular glow, and I'm gonna bump up the value. And one more thing I'm gonna add to this is vignette. So now we start playing around with pin highlights and also with the amount, we're gonna kind of darken it out on the side. So now I'm gonna probably bump up the angle of view as well. And that's becoming my desired look. So that's how it's looking with vignette on and without, a bit better in my opinion. Probably adjusting the timing a little bit would be a good idea. And I'm also gonna add deep glow to the second text, but this is way too much. I'm gonna change it to 0.1 and change the radius to like hmm, 100. We could also go back to our stroke in the background and play around with the color. That kind of bright blue is looking better. Ooh, I don't know, this is, this is giving me kind of a futuristic vibe. I really, really like it. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna duplicate cam control four, hit you, delete the last keyframe, parent four to five. We got already a lot of nulls. And then we're gonna go back one more time and I'm gonna hit R, I'm gonna keyframe Z, put it to the beginning and we're just gonna go like, I don't know, to 40 degrees maybe. Then we need to adjust X and Y and we're gonna use a mid graph for this. I'll probably adjust X and Y one more time. You could always separate yourself with action safe. Here we have the center. So I'm just gonna try my best with aligning it. One more thing, I would probably go backwards even more. Right now I'm gonna turn off the effects and also something we need is an ink splatter. So that's how it's looking. Then I'm gonna turn it into 3D layer. Probably move it away from the camera. I'm gonna scale it up, change the rotation, scale it up again. And let's see what we got. 
All right, we need to adjust the timing. Starting to look pretty good. I'll probably trim that white beginning. Also, I'm gonna put vignette on top to make order. And then what we're gonna do with this is grab a lip tool. I'm gonna create a circle in the middle. I'm gonna hit invert it. I'm gonna go to mask expansion, decrease the pixels to fill out the whole frame. Keyframe it, move it forward and increase pixels. Now let's see. Okay, that's way too slow. Okay, looks better. One more adjustment. I was probably just easy the keyframes and let's use one of the graphs. Adjustments, adjustments. We're gonna feather it out a little bit. Okay, starting to look pretty good. Timing seems a bit off, so we're just gonna grab it by two frames backwards. Yeah, I'm good with this. Now I'm gonna go to imaginative outlines and we're gonna grab a clock. I'm gonna take HD clock, copy it, paste it here, recenter, and we're just gonna turn it into 3D layer. I'm gonna move it somewhere in front of that layer and then I'm gonna scale it up. Let's see in the second view. Seems to be in a pretty good position. Adjust the timing. Okay, let me see one more time. I kind of want to emphasize that clock and I feel like the background is stealing all the attention. So we're just gonna add exposure to this. I'm gonna decrease it. And then once we add deep glow to that clock, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Now I'm gonna hit Control T, type in time. We're gonna change it to white color. Turn it into 3D. We could probably copy the transform from our clock, paste it here. And then with Z position, we're just gonna get it a little bit in front of the clock. I'm gonna adjust the rotation. Okay, and let's see what we got. And we're just gonna slide it in from the left. So I'm just gonna do it like that. Easy ease and use intro graph. Too slow. Still too slow. Okay, now it seems perfect. Something I actually did for the text was using stroke. So we're just gonna leave it like that. And now is the time to spice it up. So first I'm gonna start with the stroke. I'm gonna bump up the pixels so it's a bit thicker. And then we're gonna use deep glow. I'm gonna copy the deep glow, put it to the text as well. We're gonna turn on the effects on everything. I'm gonna hit U for the clock and I'm gonna make it faster. I'm gonna grab these two keyframes. And basically what it's gonna cause is create faster movement for the hands. So now it should be pretty cool, especially when we add motion blur to this. I also added kind of a glitch there. So I'm just gonna probably simulate it with the flesh. I'm gonna grab an HD one. Let's take this. We're gonna drop it somewhere here. I would need to change the rotation since it's for short form. And we're also gonna head over to mode and I'm gonna apply screen. Now it's important to adjust the timing. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. And maybe on top we should add TV lines as well. Okay, let's hit enter. I'm gonna use my preset. I'm just thinking maybe let's make it brighter, that ink splatter. So I'm gonna head over to the effect controls. I'm gonna turn off the exposure. Yeah, I think that way it's gonna look better. And we're gonna finish the animation somewhere here. Now the only thing left is turning on the motion blur and also heading over to that layer. And here we need to do it as well. I'm gonna go back. Everything seems to be turned on and let's see what we've created. Wait up, one more thing. I actually have to go back here and turn on the effects on that as well. Now everything should be fine. All right, this seems to be a pretty accurate recreation to be honest. I really like that the flesh is kind of bluish and it's matching the text in the background over here. All right, all right, so we recreated the entire animation in two parts, quite happy about it. Hopefully it was insightful. And I gotta go because I have to edit the video for today and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers guys.